calming the body down will naturally thin the blood. So how do you calm the body down? As I say, mental and emotional strategies for sure. Deep breathing techniques, probably the best. And getting on a nutritional supplement program can work. You may find that from, uh, once you're on the healthy brain and body pack for a little bit, you may not even need the aspirin, or at least you can reduce your dose of the aspirin. Keep in mind, one of the leading causes of death from drugs is from plain old aspirin. Yes, I know aspirin is generally non-toxic, or gentle anyway, I won't say non-toxic, but gentle for a drug. Yes, I know aspirin has wonderful benefits, but at the same time, it is one of the leading causes of drug-induced drug deaths and drug-induced injury. So it's not just plain old aspirin, even though we call it plain old aspirin. On the other hand, vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids, good nutrition, oxygen, relaxing, Activating the relaxation nervous system through by using hot water, immersion therapy, hot baths, all the strategies we talk about are natural, non-toxic, gentle ways to thin the blood. That's a long-winded answer, but I, uh, I hope I helped you out, Linda. And good luck with your good luck with uh, uh, the brain health, healthy brain and body pack. Appreciate your call. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, I hope I see an Olean. You hope what? Oh, I'd love to see you in Olean. Please come out. Thank you so much for, thank, I appreciate that. Thanks for reminding me. All right, I'm going to move on, Linda. Got a couple more calls I want to get. Thank you for your call. Uh, Trevor in Texas, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, hello. I really enjoy your show. And thank I you. think you're the best. Uh, what do you do? I, I really enjoy your show. Thank you. I'm, I'm um, sort of like a mental patient, and I've, I'm supposed to be paranoid schizophrenia, okay. but I don't have any of those kind of symptoms at all. I have problems resting. I'm, I've been on um, loxetine, okay. the generic form of loxetine, loxetine okay. for probably about 33 years. Oh, and, oh my goodness, Trevor! Um, do you have any movement? Are, are you jittery? You have movement disorders at all? You have that? Yeah. Uh, okay. You know what, Trevor? You got some really interesting things to say, and I want to help. When I answer your question, we're going to help a lot of people. But I only have about a minute or two, and so I don't. I can't give you the amount of time that I want. I wonder if I could get you to call me tomorrow, and I'll put you first up on the. I'll put you I first up. I want to know the, what about the book that you talked about, gut and something, and I it's want called, to know. Who, uh, it's called the Gaps Diet, or it's, I'm sorry, it's called the Gut. And psychology syndrome, uh, gut and psychology syndrome, uh, and the the author of the book is Natasha Kinsky Campbell. I'm sorry, I apologize. It's I just grabbed the book here. It's Natasha Campbell McBride. Natasha Campbell McBride, and the name of the book is Gut and Psychology Syndrome. And anybody with schizophrenia or been diagnosed with schizophrenia, autism, dyslexia, ADD, you got to read this book. It is one yeah. of the best explanations of the relationship between the diet, probiotics, good bacteria, and mental health. But Trevor, I got a lot of ideas for you. I'm just flat out. We got a, a guest coming on the bottom of the hour, and I can't answer all your questions, but they're very important, and I want to help you out. Uh, and I can help you out. Can I get you to call back tomorrow, Trevor? I, I, there's a problem tomorrow. I have to okay. go to the doctor tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, whenever you can call back, I'd love to help you, and we can help a lot. I'll try you to call I, Friday. That'd be great. I'll put you first up, buddy, because we can. You and I together can help a lot of people. Okay. I got. I got to move. That's the commercial break, buddy. I'm sorry, Trevor, but please call back when you can. And as soon as I see you up there, I'll call. I'll get you first up, uh, and then we'll help some folks with uh, schizophrenia. Uh, and, and diet, the diet and schizophrenia. All right, we're coming back with our guest, Kip Tyndall of the Container Store at the bottom of the hour. Hang tight. You're going to want to hear what Kip has to say. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll find a shopping cart with all the longevity products and join the team link if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team. Well, I'm thrilled and honored to have our next guest on the program. Kip Tyndall is an 
entrepreneur extraordinaire, started an amazing company, which she'll tell you about. And not only did he start an amazing company, but he's also dedicated to a lot of the ideas that we talk about here on The Bright Side, giving back, being a good person, helping out, making a difference in the world. All the things that we're about here on The Bright Side are all the things that the longevity is about as well. Kip has done it with an amazing retail operation called The Container Store, which most of you have heard of. And he has a new book out called Uncontainable. And he's going to talk a little bit about some of his business philosophies, which fall right in the line with everything we talk about here on The Bright Side. I had a, a little brief conversation with Kip uh, during our break, and I'm thrilled to present Kip Tyndall to The Bright Side. Welcome, Kip. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. I uh, love Thank your program you. and proud to be a part of it. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, there's so much to talk about. We only have about 10 or 15 minutes to talk to you. Uh, so first and foremost, tell us a little bit about the uh, just a couple of the, of the ideas that distinguish the, the container store from, I don't want to say all, but certainly most other mass market retail kinds of operations. What is it that's special about the container store? Well, and that's really what the book about is about. The book, Uncontainable, how passion and commitment and conscious capitalism built a business where everyone thrives. Um, you know, we, uh, the container store is a, <clears throat> we call it a quirky, yummy culture, uh, an employee first culture. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty simple, really. If you take better care of your employees than anybody else, I mean, if you really take better care of them than anybody else, they really and truly will take better care of the customer than anybody else. And if those two people are ecstatic, I mean, your shareholders are going to be ecstatic. You know, the community is going to be ecstatic because you do so well, you're able to do a lot for the community. We really are trying to create a business where everyone thrives. We don't myopically just focus on the shareholder. Uh, ironically enough, the best way to take care of the shareholder is to yeah. focus first and foremost on the employee because they're the ones that deal with your vendors, they're the ones that deal with your customers, etc. That, that, did this start? Did you start the store with this philosophy, or did it evolve over time? Yeah, we. Uh, it, it certainly has evolved over time, but we were uh, really adamant about this. Um, you know, from the from the very first, <clears throat> I was, uh, you know, young, idealistic kid just love philosophy i wanted to major in philosophy in college but my dad wouldn't let me he said if you major in philosophy you got to pay your own way so i major i majored in english which is the same thing close enough yeah <laughs> but you know um it's it's um uh, one equals three is is uh, is, is so fun because people want to work with people that they think are great you know so we yeah. we say look uh, one equals three is an understatement you're you're 20 or 50 times better at a lot of things than than i am and but just the concept that if someone's three times as good as someone else, hire that person, pay them mm. well, train them well, and then the other people that get to work with them are delighted with them because, you know, who wants to work with uh, yeah. people that are not engaged and not particularly good at what they want to do? Uh, so one equals three is one of those foundation principles that the you, company is, is founded on that we talk about. The you up everybody's game. You up everybody's game that way. <laughs> So you, I noticed I noticed that you you registered the term conscious capitalism. Is that you you own the trademark on that? Is that correct? No, we don't. There's a I'm actually on the board of a of, of a group called Conscious Capitalism, and it's something that I'm very passionate to spreading the word on. Um, uh, crazily enough, the uh, founder and uh, CEO, uh, uh, the co-founder and co-CEO of Whole Foods, John Mackey. He's from Boulder, uh, is, uh, I think. He's a Boulderite. Yeah, he lives in Boulder and also Austin, where Whole Foods is based. He's really passionate about it, too. And um, Amazingly, he and I were college roommates at University of Texas in Austin years ago. Oh, wow. And, uh, and then we both went off and started these conscious capitalist retail companies. And oh, my goodness. Funny is, that's sure as heck not what we talked about when we were in school, right? That's not what we talked about. Not even we, a little bit? Not even a little bit? Uh, maybe a little bit, but you yeah. know, there were, there were, there were other uh, things a lot more interesting, like girls and those kinds of <laughs> distractions. And so, but we did go out and create two uh, businesses oh, that, that really have the same business philosophy. I mean, almost identical business philosophy. We don't always agree on politics or a lot of other things, but we certainly agree on on, on business philosophy, like like communication is leadership. Leadership is communication. That's what it is. And so uh, uh, customers and employees are, are, are longing for uh, transparency. That's what they want. And I like to choose friends and employees the same way based on how transparent they are. I just, I just don't think, I think life's too short for people that are opaque. Deceit. 
Do you, you uh, equate opaqueness with deceit or dishonesty? Yeah, uh, yeah, or, or just just operating on a need-to-know basis. I mm-hmm. think I think that type of behavior is mostly driven uh, by deep-seated insecurities, which mm-hmm. can be uh, you know a really bad thing. And so, uh, I also think a business that nurtures and develops and, uh, and and allows people to be exactly who they are and be the best they can be That's uh, great. Uh, reduces those insecurities and allows people to be. You know, it's all kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of need. The, the higher you are on Maslow's hierarchy of need, the, the better you can be to the people around you and your company and, and, and that type of thing. So companies, I think, have a responsibility to uh, uh, nurture and develop employees so that they lose their insecurities, they become um, uh, modestly uh, self-confident, and then they can do better for their business, the coworkers, the customers, et cetera. Now, we have, a lot of our, our listeners here are involved in, in uh, network marketing, multi-level marketing. I don't know if you're familiar with it. How do some of your, some of your uh, fundamental principles of selling, for example, you have this concept you call um, man in the desert selling. How can somebody who's doing a, a, entrepre- a multi-level marketing uh, or a network marketing kind of business, entrepreneurs who are operating on a multi-level um, framework, how can they apply man in the desert selling, for example? Well, that's an important one, and um, at the Container Store, we sell solutions, not items. Uh, we have these great, uh, really well-paid, really well-trained uh, uh, people that are uh, spending a lot of time with you, and, and, and you wind up buying 12 things to organize your, your toy storage area. So that, that's a solution to something that's been bugging you forever, not, you know, not just one item. But mm. man in the desert, uh, what most people in sales positions, be it retail or any sales positions, are, are, are really deep down worried about is they want to get through life without ever being accused of being a pushy salesperson. So as a result, they usually wind up underselling or wimping out or not really giving the customer what she needs and wants and deserves because they're kind of afraid of doing too much and so they do too little. We're trying to get what we call the customer dance. We want you to where you go in your closet that we've uh, organized for you. You love it so much that you do a little dance. You're so excited about it. You don't get the customer dance if you're worried about um, uh, being seen as, as, as pushy. You're incomplete. So the man in the desert, what do you do when you see the man in the desert? You go out and give him a glass of water, and then you pat yourself on the back for thinking that you've done something great. But actually, you can, you can uh, bring him into your oasis, and you can give him uh, uh, aloe vera and food and call home to tell his family he's okay. You're intuiting his needs and really thrilling the guy, really helping him in the true mm. sense of the word, not not selling him more than he wants, helping him in the true sense of the word. That actually puts the moral imperative, if you will, on selling rather than not selling. It makes uh, selling a good thing. So you, you owe it. You actually, you're holding out in a way. If you don't, if you don't sell them, you're actually holding out. That's not kind of. That's not unfair in a way. Hey, Kip, thanks so much for joining us. I know you got to you got to go. I appreciate the the uh, brief time you spent with us. The book is uncontainable. Kip Tendall, thank you so much. Have a beautiful day, Kip. Uh, hopefully, we'll get you on another time sometime soon. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. We've got a shopping cart up at brightsideben.com with all the longevity products, including the new Beyond Organic products and the new Restart Your Life products, the the beta-glucan products. I'm not actually sure uh, that they're in stock yet, but... They're all, you can find them all up at brightsideben.com, including the Healthy Start Pack and the Healthy Brain and Digestion Pack, all the healthy packs. You can also find a Join the Team link up at brightsideben.com if you want to help me in my mission to educate the world about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. For you guys in the Olean, New York, upstate New York area, I am going to be doing a talk for my friend Jonathan Smith uh, this Tuesday. Uh, the 21st of October at the, uh, the uh, well, I'll let Jonathan tell you because he's on the line. Jonathan, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Ben? What's going on? Good to talk to you, and I'm very excited to see you again. Having, I guess I haven't seen you for, what, what it's been two years no, it's probably? Been about two and a half, two and a half years. It's two and a half years. Uh, 2012, right. I've known, just let me tell the listeners here real quick, Jonathan, then we'll let you talk about your event. 
I've known Jonathan now for going on four years, I think. I met Jonathan right after I started doing The Bright Side, and I was really impressed by his, uh, by his passion to help people and by his knowledge as well. Jonathan was actually transcribing my shows before he, I even asked him to do anything. Jonathan was transcribing my shows on his own, uh, and he's been writing a lot of stuff.